Hey everyone, I'm Jay and we're doing another lab today, 6.14. Today we're going to talk about accumulators and counters. Let me pronounce that better. Accumulators and counters. Uh, so oftentimes we're going to do in programming, we're going to do a lot of loops, right? And oftentimes we need to count through that loop uh, so that we know how many times we're iterating so that we can access uh, values in lists and arrays and so on. And also, we're going to accumulate things now. Uh, we're going to add things together. We're going to, every time we loop, we're going to have a variable and we're just going to add to it and add to it and add to it. And it's not always going to be plus one. It's going to be something that is dependent on either user input, we're going to do user input, uh, or it could be dependent on some other function. So maybe it's going to loop every time. It's going to call some function that maybe you didn't even make. Maybe somebody else made this function, returns a value, and you just need to add that value over and over again every time that loop runs. Uh, for any kind of purposes, right? It could be anything. It could be financial reasons. You're just you're adding up. Uh, values positive or negative values, right? You're adding up values for uh, a receipt and you're adding those all up until you get to the next step where you have to calculate tax or something, right? So you have a loop that just keeps adding, 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 adding. Um, and then when it finishes, then it begins a, another process and calculation after. We're not going to get that involved in this. Lab. We're just going to do. Uh, one loop that takes some input from the user and adds to it, and we're also going to count how many times, okay? Uh, which is also useful for things like maybe a receipt at the end, you put in a total, and then you all also put in how many items there were. Um, one of the big things to look out for with doing counters or iterators is off by one errors. So I have my beginning of my program here where you jump into this off by one here, right? I have my main function, I have my default values, set to zero, and game over is equal to false. If you remember from the previous lab, I like to use game over for my main loops, right? My, uh, my first dive into programming was game programming, so that's been forever I've used this game over value. Um, so my main loop is while not game over. Now, oftentimes, if I have to have a counter in a loop, the two main places I'm going to put that counter are very first thing, then I'll do counter plus equals one right away because I don't want to forget it. I don't want to write a bunch of code. I forgot to put my counter and I accidentally created a loop that goes forever. Right? I don't want to do that. So I'll do it first. The other thing I'll do is I'll put it last and when I put it last it's because I need to use the the value of the counter before I count it right so sometimes your program needs to know what that value is of to know the value of the counter within the loop and sometimes you need that value to be the number before you've added one and sometimes it needs to be the number after you've added one so a lot of times <laughs> If you don't think about what you're doing ahead of time, you're going to be off by one. You're either going to be one too many or one too few because your counter, you either did it too early or too late in your loop. Uh, or maybe you forgot it altogether and the loop just stays at zero. Um, I actually had an extra test when I originally put this together and it would just cancel out every time because my test was, uh, was just failing every time. I had too much stuff in there. Um, it was just failing for the data type, actually. I was trying to make this a little bit more advanced than it needed to be. Um, but that's a very common error is off by one, and it's usually because you added to your counter either right away in your loop when you weren't supposed to do it right away, or you did it at the end of your loop when you were supposed to do it at the end, you were supposed to do it at the beginning. So you need to iterate your counter Usually it's going to be either at the end or at the beginning. Very rarely will it be right in the middle somewhere. Um, 
you could put it in the middle sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't exactly matter where it is. Um, but when I'm putting it in there, I either really want it to be at the front of the loop so I don't forget it. And we like to put our variable declarations at the top so we can find them. So I like to put it at the top of the loop. Um, or if I really need to work with that previous value of the counter, I'll put the counter at the bottom of the loop. Um, and also it's important to note the starting value of your counter as well. Usually it's going to start at zero. Uh, in computers, we often start counting at zero. Arrays start at zero. Um, in this case, I start counting at zero because when the program begins to run, I've not gotten any input from the user yet, so zero is an accurate value. Um, but sometimes you're going to start counting at one as well. So that can contribute to an off by one. You could actually double that up and have off by two error uh, if you had both conditions happen. All right, so be careful of those. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, uh, let's go back and make sure we didn't miss anything. I have my, uh, my stuff in the beginning telling you what I'm working on. Uh, I have my main function. I have my default values. So I have an accumulator. Every time it runs, we'll get a number from the user, and they can type in any number they want, integer, float, positive, negative, whatever. Uh, and I'm going to add to that previous value. So this is just going to be a running total. Okay. And then I have the counter. The user doesn't have direct manipulation of this. It's going to add one every time the user puts in a new number. And I have my game over, my loop control. Um, so I have a welcome message. Okay. Welcome to the simple Python accumulator. And then immediately we're going to go into our loop. I'm going to get a temp value, right? I'm casting as a float message to the user. Please enter any number greater than zero. Oh, I actually told them to be greater than zero, so we don't want negative numbers. But this could handle negative numbers. Um, but it does definitely handle uh, decimals or whole numbers. Any number greater than zero, and then I have in parentheses, or zero to exit. Next, I'm going to test is my temp value not equal to zero? Because if it is zero, that's my game over condition. Now, I could test either way. I could say if temp value is equal to zero, I can put the game over stuff first in my if statement. Or I can test if it's not equal to zero, and I put the game over stuff at the end. I like to put the more positive thing first. Right, the thing that I'm looking for to continue running my program. Um, but sometimes these uh, if conditions get a little bit more complicated, and you can always rewrite it to be one or the other, but sometimes it's, it, it's just difficult, right? Uh, so do it whichever way makes sense to you when you get to it. Because a working program that, you know, the if statement is flip-flopped, as long as it works, it's going to work. If you're having trouble writing it the other way around um, and you can't get it to work, make it the way that it works. Okay? So if the user has entered something that's not zero, I'm going to say the accumulator is equal to add number. And I have brought my function from last time. I've just changed the name of it. It used to say add int. I think now it just says add number and doesn't care if it's an integer or a float. Uh, so I'm going to add number, accumulator, and temp value. Well, I could just say accumulator equals accumulator plus temp value. Or I could say accumulator plus equals temp value. But I wanted to carry that function from last time. Okay? Totally not necessary, but I wanted to include that, that bit of a reference. Right? So my accumulator is now getting bigger by however much the user entered. Uh, and then my counter, that's going to be the more simple counter plus equal one. Uh, as soon as I've done that, I've updated the values. Now I'm going to say uh, print accumulated total is whatever the accumulator is equal to with the formatted string here. Then I'm going to print a new line, although technically I could just put a new line right there and 
not do that and do it all in one print statement. That's probably better, uh, more efficient this way. Let's just get rid of this line right here altogether. All right, so if the user had input zero, right, if temp value is equal to zero, now game over is going to be equal to true. Uh, and I get this little thing from PyCharm that says I have a typo in the word game over. Yeah, it's a variable name, PyCharm. Don't worry about it. Uh, so game over equals true. And at the very end of our program, we're going to print out the grand total. And I'm actually trying to print out a format of four digits before the decimal and two digits after the decimal. But it kind of doesn't work out for me. So I'm just going to do two digits after the decimal place on the accumulator. And then I'm going to do a four digit counter. Uh, and so the four digit counter, let's say the counter is only a single digit long. It's going to put those empty spaces in there. And this is going to make the counter uh, just kind of push it over a little bit, not, not uh, make it align maybe a little bit better with the accumulator's value. Right, so I have a grand total and an item count. Uh, that's going to complete the loop. When the loop finishes, we'll say goodbye. Have a couple of new lines. I have a little extra comment right here. And then that is going to do it for this here. So a much shorter lap than our last one. Let's run this and uh, see what it does here. Let me move my my screen a bit. There we go. And run into this. Okay. So please uh, welcome to the simple Python accumulator. Please enter any number greater than zero or zero to exit. So I'm going to go to 3.456. All right. So far the total is 123.456. Now add another. I'm going to do 79.123. Right, it's going to add those together and we get some weird stuff in there. That's just how floating point numbers work in computers. I don't worry about that too much. Uh, and we can carry on. I'm going to add one. And when we're ready, we can exit by pressing zero. And it's going to say, here is my output. It's going to round or truncate to two decimal places. Tell me. Uh, how many times, how many things did I add up to begin with? Uh, and then say goodbye. All right. So that is, that's going to do it for uh, lab 6.14, talking about accumulators and counters in loops. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.